Hey guys, it's PK Mario, and I'm here today revisiting one of my older videos, specifically how to record music from the internet onto a cassette tape. Uh, now, that video in particular has actually become the most viewed one on my channel, being the first to surpass 10,000 views. And while I think that's great, I don't think I did a very good job explaining how you should do this. So that's what I'm here for today. So you might be wondering what the whole appeal of recording music from, a, from the internet onto a cassette is. Uh, really, there's no practical reason to do it. It's something that people just do for fun these days. But regardless, you might still be curious as to how you would go about doing something like this. So let's get started. Firstly, what you're going to need here is a tape deck. Now, in this specific case, I would recommend using a tape deck like one of these or uh, even this one over here. You want to use something that's specifically meant for cassette tapes. I'd recommend staying away from boom boxes, especially cheaper ones, because that's where you run into issues like getting your tapes eaten, and the recording on those types of machines just generally isn't of the highest quality. I'd also recommend just completely staying away from voice recorders, like the ones you'd see in a classroom, or one of those handheld ones, because those are not designed for recording music. The second thing you're going to need is an auxiliary cord. Uh, this is going to help us hook up our device um, that will allow us to record music from the internet. Now, of course, these old tape decks uh, can't use standard auxiliary cords where it's headphone jack to headphone jack. They require these two inputs here. Um, now these are typically the sorts of things that you would see on a VCR or a video game console. These are just the audio inputs, and the video input would be yellow. I do, in the previous video I actually used an auxiliary cord that had a yellow and black input, uh, and someone had actually brought that up in the comments. Uh, that's just a weird cord. It's still meant for recording audio because it did have the headphone jack input here, but... Um, generally speaking, the cord that you're going to want to use is going to have these inputs and this headphone jack. Uh, if for whatever reason you have one of those newer devices where they decided to remove the headphone jack, then all you really need is an adapter, such as if you have one of the newer iPhones, you use lightning to headphone jack, and then you plug that in to the auxiliary cord, which then gets plugged into the tape deck. Uh, just to remember, left is white, red is right. Um, easy enough to remember, and you just plug those into the back of the tape deck here, like so, trying to keep it in horizontal mode while also plugging those in is kind of difficult. But yeah, from here, you can basically plug in whatever device you want, and that will allow you to record music from the internet. Uh, the third thing you're going to need is, of course, that device that will give you internet access. And let me just say that cassette tapes are extremely versatile. You can record just about anything onto them, and you can use just about any device just so long as it can hook up to the tape deck via the auxiliary cord. Uh, you could use your phone, your tablet, your laptop. Hell, if you want to, you could bring your tape deck and hook it up to your desktop computer although I'd recommend using a more mobile device instead because that's a little bit less of a hassle and it gives you more to work with. Um, and lastly, of course, you're going to need a blank cassette tape. Uh, generally speaking, I would avoid using ones where you can't even read the brand name, such as the one seen in that video I did called Crappy Cassette Tapes, uh, because that was a very cheap cassette tape that I actually got a box of 10 for free. Um, the best ones that you can find are usually manufactured by Maxell. In fact, these specific tapes, these UR Normal Bias 90 tapes, uh, Maxell was actually manufacturing these up until I think 2020. In fact, I think you can still buy them in Japan, but 
uh, here in North America, you can get them at flea markets. In fact, there's plenty of places where, because these were in circulation for so long, you can still find these factory sealed. Um, of course, there's other types of Maxell tapes here, and I'd say that as a second place, if you can't find any Maxell tapes, TDK are also pretty suitable. They're pretty good too. Um, there are a bunch of other brands such as Fuji, Sony, BASF. Those ones are all decent, but you're better off sticking with either Maxell or TDK. Uh, one thing you might notice though with some of these tapes is that they have a type number on them, such as this one right here, type one. Or this one, uh, it doesn't say on this tape specifically, but uh, this is a type 2 chrome tape, and so is this one. Um, yeah, um, essentially, uh, there are four different types of tapes, four different types of blank tapes, and uh, to give you the long and short of it without getting too technical, essentially, the higher the type, supposedly the better the tape is. The darker the tape, the better the tape. Um, type 1 is ferric oxide, type 2 is chromium oxide, type 3 is a combination of ferric and chrome, uh, I think it's known as a ferric chromium tape, and type 4 is metal tape. Now type 1 and 2 are actually pretty common, especially type 1. Those are probably the most common blank tapes you'll find. Uh, and you definitely don't want to spend more than $5 a pop for one of these tapes. Uh, type 2 are a bit less common, but they are a bit better than Type 1 tapes. Uh, type 3 are extremely rare because they were pulled from the market after only a couple of years. In fact, I think I've only ever seen one in the wild. It was a used one, and the guy was trying to sell it for $50. And then there's metal tapes. Uh, those are supposedly the best of the best. Uh, and because of that, they are very coveted, and they are very expensive, going for anywhere from $20 to $100 per tape. Now, I will say this, unless you're some super hardcore audiophile, you don't need the very best cassette deck, you don't need the very best tapes, uh, even just a Type 1 tape and a half-decent cassette deck, you will get pretty good sound quality from these tapes. One thing to keep in mind though is that some of these blank tapes might not have these tabs here in place. Um, essentially, these are meant to protect your recordings from being recorded over, uh, and with the tabs in place, uh, this allows you to record over previous recordings. Uh, if you break them out, then whatever is on the tape will stay on the tape. Of course, if you buy yourself a used blank tape and these tabs are already broken out, simply a piece of scotch tape or electrical tape or whatever you can jam into these holes uh, will allow you to record over what was previously on the tape. With that in mind, you can actually record over pre-recorded tapes, such as this one right here, but I generally recommend staying away from something like that. These tapes are not meant to be re-recorded over. They were not designed for such a thing. Um, and of course, you'll also have to keep in mind the length of these albums uh, because these tapes were specifically cut to a certain length, that being the length of the album on it. Plus, I mean, why would you want to record over Black Sabbath? Now that we have all of the necessary tools in place, all you need to do now is record your music onto your cassette tape or whatever it is you want to record. Uh, now this tape deck that I'm using here does have a few extra bells and whistles that some lower end decks might not have, but let's just quickly go over what we have here. So we have input select, uh, this being that you can either choose to record from a microphone or a line. Uh, you have the microphone input right over here. You have the line on the back, which is what we were focusing on earlier. You have noise reduction. This can remove some of the background noise from your recordings. The only thing is, though, you'll have to remember to turn this on whenever you're using the tape 
if you decide to put noise reduction in there, only because it adds background noise to the recording, so that way it can be filtered out when you go to play it back. Uh, I think most tapes on the label, when you go to put it on the actual cassette, uh, there is an option that you can check off for whether or not the recording has noise reduction. You'll just want to keep that in mind. Now this deck specifically has a uh, different tape type uh, selection. You can choose either regular or chrome. Those are both this first option here. You have ferric chrome if you can manage to track down one of those tapes, and you have metal if you can manage to get your hands on one of those. You have these two dials, which uh, in this case don't really mean a whole lot. And then you have this monitor thing, which if you have a three-head deck such as this one, this allows you to either listen to the source recording, that is how it originally sounds, or you can listen to what it sounds like on the tape as it's being recorded. Now probably the most important part of this whole process is the VU meters and the input level. These VU meters monitor the, uh, monitor the volume of the recording. Uh, now generally speaking you don't want the music to go too far into the red. A tiny bit into the red is fine, uh, but once you get further in, then your recording starts to sound a bit distorted. You also don't want it to be too low, otherwise there will be a much larger amount of background noise present in the final recording. Uh, now normally cassette decks will also have a dial here which allows you to monitor the input level and change it as you go on with your recording at your own discretion. Um, now this one actually has two dials, one dial on top of the other, but uh, generally speaking, the higher up you put it, the higher the volume of the recording will be. This comes in handy because certain rips are louder or quieter than others. Um, and then of course we have the tape over here, we have the record button, the stop button, uh, all that other fancy stuff. Uh, some cassette decks will also have uh, this feature where once it gets to the end of the tape, the tape heads will flip and you will be able to listen and record on the other side of the tape. Uh, in some cases, such as the Nakamichi Dragon, which is often seen by a lot of audiophiles and people in the cassette community as the best cassette deck ever made, uh, in that case it actually flips the cassette around rather than the heads, uh, because of this belief that the heads will gradually over time misalign and uh, that'll throw the tape out of whack a bit and thus it won't quite sound right. Uh, I don't quite know how that works, I think that's how it works, but yeah, um, once you have all that set up, uh, I'd recommend going through a test recording just to make sure that everything sounds right before you actually commit to recording your music on the tape. Uh, once you get to, once you finish this one side, your tape deck will most likely stop in its place. Then you flip it over and record on the other side. If you want, you can break out the tabs and thus you'll have a permanent recording. Unless, of course, you decide to record over that, then you could do as I said and just uh, tape over the holes if you want. Um, but yeah, overall it's a pretty simple process. You can record just about anything you want onto a blank tape, uh, just so long as you can hook it up to a tape deck. I hope this does a better job clarifying what exactly you need to do in order to go through with this process, and... Yeah, I'll see you guys around.